Hello viewers, welcome back to the Moose Mobile Auto Repair Channel. And today we're working on a 2011 Dodge Journey with the 2.4 liter engine. And today the customer's complaint is that the headlights are not working and the wipers are not working. And also this vehicle came from another shop in which the the mechanic has stated that that the that it's a, a bcm body control module issue and the the mechanic basically just told the customer to take the vehicle to the chrysler dodge a dealership to have it fixed so i'm not too sure on what's going on there and uh, I'm, I'm really not sure if 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 that mechanic actually diagnose the issue uh, on this vehicle so so today we are just going to have a look at it and see on what's going on here so the first thing that you always have to do is to verify the customer's complaint this vehicle has 263,641 kilometers on it so we're just going to, to turn the headlights on. But before we do that, we're going to start the vehicle first. We're going to turn the headlights on. And I see that that one headlight bulb is working on the right side, along with the side marker bulb. The other side is not working. I'm going to press the high beam. The high beam works on the left side. The indicators are working. There's a low tire pressure light on, but I, I, I don't think I'm going to worry about that. Uh, the airbag light is on as well. So when I try the wipers, uh, the wipers don't move or do anything. And uh, I, I, I don't hear the motor either, but the washer works. If I press, if I push down, there's the washer fluid. So the washer works, but the, uh, the wiper is not working. So we'll have to look into that. I don't know if that's a, a separate issue or if, or if everything is, is related. The rear wiper in the back is working. You can see that and the rear washer so that's working the customer stated that the, when the headlight stopped the stopped working they stated that the the wipers also stopped working so i'm not sure on what's going on i'm just gonna see if we can do like a visual inspection first and just go from there and then later we'll grab a scan tool and see and uh, what's happening so I'm just going to shut the vehicle off now. The door locks and everything seem to work. Lock and unlock. Let's see if the blower works. The blower is working. Radio. The radio is working. So it seems like everything is working. Is just except that the everything is working except uh, the wipers, the front wipers, and, and some of the headlight bulbs. So. I'm just going to go do one thing at a time here. See if I can put a new bulb for the headlights and see if, the, if they work. And then I'll proceed to the, the wiper motor and, and test that out. Because I believe it could just be all a separate problem because it's only those two things. So I don't think there's a big issue. It doesn't seem or sound like a BCM problem. But we're still going to have a look, do our visual inspections and see 
on what's going on here. So right now I have the headlights on and only the low beam is working along with the side marker. So we'll see if we can replace the bulbs on the one side and see if they start to work. Hopefully it's not a, a bigger problem than and, and what we think it is. So I just installed a new bulb on this side and uh, it's still not uh, lighting up on this side. So I have the bulb in there, but it's still not uh, showing up. So it's only the passenger side that's working. Driver's side is not working. And you can see the brake lights are working, but only on the left side. But the right side, there isn't anything here. So now I have the scan tool hooked up. I was checking a few things off camera in the, uh, the fuse box and where the driver's side is under the hood and one underneath the, uh, the passenger side inside. And so uh, they call this the, uh, the TI PM or the TIPM, the Totally Integrated uh, Power Module. So um, I'm just having a look at the scan tool at the moment to see if there's any codes and just going from there. I did notice that somebody has been inside the passenger's uh, fuse box area. And so um, I don't think there's anything that's related to the circuits for the, the headlights and the wipers and the, the brake lights for here. And I saw this uh, hanging down. This was hanging down, it wasn't in all the way. And this piece I saw, it was already broken. I took this, the cover off, just a, a couple of clips. There's, there's a wire that's, I don't know on what this wire is, but it's going from behind the dash. I don't know if it's going to the radio or something. And there's a couple of other wires that I saw in the back here. So I don't know on what these wires are for and uh, if they are original aftermarket. I saw some stuff like a screw in a broken piece from the fuse box area, I think. So I don't know what's going on here, but I'm still, uh, I'm digging in to see uh, uh, what's going on. I'm gonna press okay. Give me uh, a system scan. So I'm going to go to body control module. See if there's any codes. Read fault code. DTC information. There's a few codes here. Uh, the rear wiper park input circuit short to battery. It's an active exterior lighting power supply input to circuit open. And it says uh, passenger door lock unlock switch stuck. And wiper park switch input circuit short to ground. So uh, there's a possibility that the, the wipers, the wiring for the wipers are shorted or something. I don't know. I'll have to have a, have a look at the trouble codes and see uh, what's going on here. So I cleared the codes for the BCM, but the two codes, they, they, they come back pretty much right away. And also just using a test light to make sure that there's, uh, there's power going to the, to the TIPM or the TIPM making sure that the test light, it lights up uh, accordingly. The issue is the, the test light, it doesn't always 
a light up like a hundred percent unless it, I really try to to put the touch light in there. So I don't know if if these cables or the eyelets if they need a cleaning because it could be could be that the it doesn't have a hundred percent a proper ground over here. So that 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 could be causing an issue, but I'm not a hundred percent sure yet. But I'm still having a look into it. So I know that uh, a lot of the the Chrysler vehicles are having issues with the uh, the fuse box here. It's like a fuse box and a module at the same time. So um, I may need to do a, a a reset. So that's that requires disconnecting both of the battery terminals and and touching them together leaving it on there for one or two minutes and then reconnecting the battery sometimes that works sometimes it doesn't so uh, i have to see i'm going to, to look up the codes and to see on uh on, on what's next just for the uh the, the shits and giggles uh just having a look at the charging voltage just to make sure that the alternator is putting out the proper voltage and and this is okay I'm just just uh, doing my due diligence to make sure everything is okay because I know that uh, a bad alternator can make things go all like like funky and wonky if the alternator is not working properly so I'm just making sure that the vehicle is uh, a charging so I'm just having a look at at, at something in the uh, in the back of the trunk area just trying to see if there were any uh, broken wires, if, if there was any like uh, like rubbing on the wires, but I didn't uh, find anything. Just uh, having a look for any aftermarket stuff that could be causing the the short for the wipers and the, the headlight uh, issue, but uh, I uh, I didn't find anything yet so far. So from my understanding about this vehicle uh if the the tipm senses that there's a short or something short to ground or, or, sh or short to power or something in in one of the circuits it will start to shut down the other circuits to protect those circuits from damage so it's possible that something happened with the wipers or something and so now it's has started to disable other other uh, systems. So I'm going to have a look at the the front wiper, uh, the front wiper system first, and seeing what's going on. See if we can see if there's a short or something, and just go from there. So I'm just in the process of of removing the the wiper arms so I can get access to the uh, electrical connection for the wiper motor so uh, this one is seized on here so i'm just i'm just using a, a tie rod removal tool so i can uh, push down on the stud to get the the uh the wiper arm off there you go I just need a, a tiny bit of a, of a small pull from the pullet to get it off. Should be loose now. There we go. There's a little bit of, uh, of corrosion in there, so sometimes it can be badly seized to the point to the point where uh, you're not even able to get the wiper arm off, on, on, unless you break the uh, the wiper wiper uh, transmission or the linkage. So I've had a time where I just uh, 
if if I don't need to take it off, I just leave it alone. So anyways, uh, I got that out now. That's out. And now I can uh, remove the cowl, hopefully, so I can gain access to the wiring for the wipers. Just uh, having a look here. Uh, the wiper motor is back here, so there's an electrical connection over here, so I'm going to have a look at it now seeing what's going on. Just having a look at the, at the wiring, seeing um, uh, what's going on here. So with the ignition on and the wiper switch on, just uh, having a look uh, for ground. There's two grounds here. And I'm going to switch over to the, the positive side. So I'm going to hook up to the, the negative side. Check for positive. For power. And for some reason, it's not receiving any power when I go to any of these pins while it's on so obviously there's uh something going on here like a short maybe so I'll see I have to see and where the source of the short is so I'm still trying to figure out on what the issue is on what's going on with the wipers and the headlights uh, I still haven't uh gotten down to what the problem is i'm still in the process of doing my investigation work uh, off camera i was on the scan tool trying to check for the on and off uh, status for the the front wipers every time i turn the switch to on on the multi-function switch it would not show it would not show on it still say off and just for a split moment that said on and then I went back to off so uh, so at the moment I took the multi function switch out just to have a quick inspection of the uh, of the circuit board just wanted to see if there's any any like burnt marks or anything and I was not able to find anything in the uh, in the circuit board on both sides so I'm, I'm not seeing anything so I'm just going to put this back for now and see uh, on, on, on what else I can have a look into. Uh, I'm just a little bit stumped because uh, I'm trying to figure out the easiest and quickest way for diagnostic. So I'm still trying to figure out on, on what's happening here. So I'm just going to put the, the multi-function switch back. I don't know if this is causing an issue or not i don't see any evidence of like burn marks or any burning smells from the uh, the circuit board so i'm just gonna put everything back and uh, i may do like a hard reset and see if that does anything and just go from there so i'm just uh, going to put this back for the time being just line everything up. This is a, a little bit of a, a tricky situation here of what's going on. So I don't know. The customer's mechanic said that the body control module is bad. But I don't know if 
the mechanics spent the time to have a look into it he's just uh, just uh, <laughs> guessing because really you need to do the diagnosis to verify on, on what the problem is you can't just go and say yeah it's this or it's that you can't just go and randomly replace parts so just trying to find the easiest way to do the diagnosis to find where the problem is and also uh, doing a visual inspection usually helps in a majority of cases sometimes you can find broken wires or, or bad grounds bad grounds just by doing a, uh, <clears throat> a visual uh, inspection on the vehicle so far i haven't really found anything in the obvious yet so i'm just going to keep on trying and and seeing what happens so the the multi-function switch is very easy on this one it just S slides in you need to install the the connector first before you you slide it in this up and then it, it slides in should snap into place and then you have the the cover for the, the steering column it just goes in And then that's it. It's the rear wiper. It's working as per usual. So now I, I jacked the vehicle up. Uh, I took the, uh, the, the, the inner fender uh, liner out and the plastic clips are not <laughs> very good or friendly they're all like, like very hard and brittle so I'm just going to be <laughs> replacing those so the battery is located in the driver's <laughs> inner fender area and the, the manufacturers are are very smart that they put it in a, a very good spot to easily <laughs> Uh, accessible and of course I'm just kidding this is uh, the, the stupidest spot uh, to put a battery so anyhow I disconnected the negative and the positive and I zip tied them uh, together so I'm just gonna wait probably like 10 minutes and this will clear all of the memory stored in the modules including the the BCM and the ECM and all of the modules inside the vehicle. So hopefully it's a, it's it's worth a try because I've seen on some Chrysler vehicles that they can all act up and stuff. So I'm just giving this a shot to see if, if it does anything at all and, and seeing what happens after I reconnect it and, uh, and then we'll see. So I just put a zip tie together, making sure that the positive and the negative are touching each other. And that way it'll, uh, it'll clear anything that's been stored in the memory. And, and, then, uh, and then we'll see on what happens next. So as I'm waiting for the, the battery to reset, I was just having a look at the, at the fuse box. 
and uh, just having a look at the condition of the cables see if there's any corrosion uh, having a look at the at the ground uh, connection see if, uh, if if maybe I probably have to clean the uh, connections I see there's a little bit of corrosion here so maybe it's it's worthwhile uh, to clean these because that could cause problems sometimes and the eyelets here are pretty cheap cheaply made so they can get corroded relatively easy so I may take them off and just clean them anyways just in case and I also notice uh, a couple grounds on the firewall in the back there too so I finally found something there's a broken ground cable here there is, is one of the eyelets here. This is a, a broken ground cable. Uh, I found this in, in the very back, hiding behind the AC lines, air conditioning line. So I'll probably have to fix that. I'm not sure wh what the ground, what this ground is for. So I'm going to fix that and see what happens. So I'm going to see if I can, can fix that and, cl and clean it up and clean this stuff up as well here and, and just go from there so i uh, i cleaned up uh, all of the grounds i had to to make a new ground like a, a makeshift ground so i just made one over here and i'm going to to double check it with a touch light to make sure that it's indeed getting ground so i, I tighten everything up and then the same for uh, the, the firewall over here on the driver's side, all of the, the ground cables, I, I clean them up and, and tying up the bolts and the, the positive cables uh, as well. Here's the old broken ground cable. I believe it's supposed to be connected to the engine mount or something uh, on top, but this uh, the this style of ground strap cable is uh, is no good. So I just replaced it with a with a uh, a basic. Uh, I think it's a, a fourteen gauge wire. The wire is a is a, a fourteen gauge. I'm not sure if it's a a, a thicker wire than that. You could use a 12 gauge wire and that's also fine. But uh, I think uh, that either or works. Now I, I still need to connect the, uh, the battery terminals now. So I double checked the, the wipers for the, the multi-function switch just to make sure it's working properly. I'm just on the scan tool having a look at the, the, the wiper uh, interval so it's off it says interval one two three four five and then it goes to low speed wiper after after position five and then now at the very end high speed wiper and I go all the way back so that seems to be working okay so Everything else seems to be working, but the issue is uh, I'm suspecting that m most likely I'm suspecting that there could be an issue with the, the body control module as the as the customer's mechanic has stated. Now I've been I've been working a little bit too long on this vehicle because uh, I was just I was looking for things for any any broken wires or anything so i was checking absolutely everything and i i couldn't really uh, find much i found a broken ground cable i fixed that and i just cleaned the connections i did a battery reset and that didn't really seem to do anything so now i think there, there could be an issue with the bcm itself that's not giving it its proper output when uh, you are gi giving the input 
you are commanding to turn the headlights on, but it's not turning all of the headlights on. Only the passenger side is working. And the, the brake lights, the right side brake and tail lights don't work. And the wipers don't work. So there is something going on. And I haven't really, I wasn't able to find anything. I couldn't find any any issues. Every time I clear the codes, it would just come back. And even I had the, the wiper motor disconnected. I cleared the code and it still came back, still saying there's a short, but the connector is disconnected. And so it's still doing that. So I think that there is a, a computer problem with the, the BCM, the body control module. So I still have to look into that. Uh, the customer has left this vehicle with me for for some time, a few days or so, or maybe or maybe a week or something. Because uh, he, he, he doesn't need this car at the moment. So I can take my time to to do the work. So so I'm going to continue off and uh, have a look at the BCM, the wiring and stuff. See what's going on and, and just go from there. So just for a reference, I decided to take out the wiper motor and the wiper transmission and or linkage. So... I decided to take it off the vehicle just to make sure and see and what's going on. And I'm just, you can either do this uh, with a 12 volt automotive battery that's on the vehicle, or you can just use a nine volt battery and that works fine. So I hook up the battery and the motor is, uh, is working. So I know that there is uh, something else that's going on on, on this vehicle. So it's not the it's not the motor or the wiper linkage. There is something else on this vehicle that's inhibiting the the wipers from working and the headlights from working properly. So uh, I think either in the next day or so, I'm going to have a look at some wiring diagrams and. Uh, and just see and what's the next uh, diagnostic process uh, I have to check the BCM because I think there's an issue with that so yeah you can hook I just hooked it up like this I don't know if I if I do it backwards it will just go backwards I just switch the uh, polarity So fast forward to the next day, uh, I printed out some important information from service information. So I printed out a wiring diagram for the front wipers. So we are going to start off with that. And then we are just going to, uh, to work our way through. And then afterwards, we are probably going to, to check the, the resistance of some of the pins on the BCM. So I printed out a wiring diagram for the front wipers. So you can see here uh, the battery and then goes to f fuse uh, 184, a 30 amp fuse. And then there are, are two relays for the front wipers. So there is one for the, uh, the on off and there's one for the high and low speed. So the, the wiring is going to go through the two relays here, d depending on and what speed it's, it's on. And then when you follow, when you follow the, the wiring diagram, uh, like down here is ground. If it goes through pin 85, when the, the circuit uh, closes, when the relay is uh, energized and then I'm just going to go through this very quickly. I'm not going to go through it uh, in great detail. So we're going to go all the way down here. You see the, the front wiper park switch sense. And you have the, the front wiper high and low for high speed. And the high and low for low speed output. Low speed output. 
high speed uh, output this is the uh, the wiper motor over here <clears throat> and so as we go along all the way down here uh, w7 brown and gray wire this is the body control module here the rectangle is the bcm so <clears throat> i believe there is something going on here in this circuit because at the front wiper park switch sense, I don't think anything is happening. So I'm suspecting there's an issue with the, the BCM. And the same for the, uh, the relay control. Because the issue is when I turn the switch, the wiper switch on. The, I could feel the, both of the relays are being uh, energized. But there isn't anything happening to the wipers. Wipers are not moving, so so something is inhibiting the wipers from working uh, properly. So we are going to look uh, into this. This is the W7 uh, wire. So says the theory of operation. Says the uh, the body control module bcm provides a reference voltage on the wiper park switch sense circuit through a pull up resistor that is connected to battery voltage the wiper park switch switches the signal circuit to ground when the wiper motor is in the park position when monitored with the ignition on set condition the body control module detects a short to ground on the front wiper park switch sense circuit possible causes front wiper park switch sense circuit shorted the ground front wiper motor body control module these are the possibilities of what's the issue is so diagnostic test intermittent condition we're not really having an intermittent condition but we are going to follow this anyway uh, turn the ignition on with the scan tool, clear all DTCs. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna clear, clear uh, all of the codes. Yes. Is it clear fault code? Succeed, but DTC is still present. Please check. Okay, and then it says cycle the wiper switch on and off three times. So we're going to cycle it on and off, on, off, on, off. And it said with the scan tool, read DTCs. Does the scan tool display this D DTC as active? So read fault code. What's the code that I wrote down? B2303-11. Right here. So it's still there. So it's stored. It doesn't say active. 3-11. Take the ignition. Turn the ignition off. Turn the ignition on. B2303-11 should be there. It says stored. So anyways, uh says stored. doesn't say active, but there's a similar code. It says active. So, so we are just going to say that, yes, it's still there. And now it says, go, go to step two. Attempt to set the opposite DTC. Turn the ignition off. Disconnect the front wiper motor harness. Then turn the ignition on. So I'm going to do that now off camera. So I disconnected the, the harness 
And now it said turn ignition on. It says to wait 30 seconds. So we're going to wait for 30 seconds. And then it says with the scan tool, read the front wiper park switch sense. So now it said uh, with the scan tool, read the front wiper park switch sense. Does the front wiper park switch sense display not parked? And uh, I'm on uh, the, the, the data stream, data stream said it's not parked. So that's a yes. It says yes. <clears throat> Now it's saying to, it says replace the front wiper motor. And earlier I had the, uh, I had the, the, the wiper, wiper motor and the linkage out. I tested it off of the vehicle. So it, it may not be parked at the moment. So that's, that's one issue. So it's saying to replace the wiper motor, but I don't think that's going to fix the problem. I'm just using this, uh, I don't know what you call this, a flow chart. I'm just taking it with a grain of salt because uh, I still want to get to the BCM and, and test it out and verify that, that the, if it's causing the issue or not. So uh, although it said, said not parked, the scan tool says to replace uh, the wiper motor, but uh, I don't think that's going to fix the problem. It doesn't make any sense because I have other issues going on here with the headlights and the brake lights and other stuff. And and, and some of them are operating on the, the same circuit for the same connector that's go plugged into the BCM. So I'm just going to continue on and just uh, do my checks. So uh, number three, uh, check W7 front wiper park switch sense circuit. We're short to ground. It said turn the ignition off. <clears throat> Disconnect the BCM A harness connector and measure the resistance between ground and the W7 front wiper park sense circuit. And it said is the resistance above 10k ohms 10k ohms is 10,000 ohms so that's basically an open in the circuit I said if yes replace the BCM so I'm just going to to get to the connector first and then test it and then I'll uh, bring you guys back on camera so uh, uh, a while ago I had all of these connectors unplugged but the issue is uh i have another car that's coming and so i'm not able to move or turn on th this vehicle if uh, i have disconnected the bcm so off camera i disconnected all of the connectors and uh, I, I wanted to take the bcm out because i can't test the the pinouts from here because there's no uh, working room, so it's a it's, it's a tight fit inside there. So uh, I just ended up putting everything back for now, and, and momentarily off camera on the scan tool when the the wipers were disconnected. Uh, momentarily, it said parked at the, the 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 front wiper park switch sense said parked. As soon as uh, I flick the switch for the uh, for the wipers, now it's saying it's not it's not parked again, and that was when the connector at the wiper motor directly was turned off. So obviously there's uh, there's something wrong. It's either that or is that the the BCM kind of resets when you disconnect the uh, connectors from them. So anyhow, uh, after I'm done working on the other vehicle that's coming in, I'm going to continue back on this. I probably have to take the entire BCM out because that's the only way I can test it. I need to test it directly at the pins that's on the BCM. And the connector that, I, I'm, that I'm looking for is all the way 
in the back corner. So it's very difficult to do any kind of testing at this point. And uh, from my understanding, uh, most most technicians, if they if they are aware of these issues, they just end up going ahead and replacing the BCM. Although uh, I don't like to guess on parts and throwing parts at it, so uh, I I always want to make sure that I'm a hundred percent, and that's the reason why uh, I've been uh, checking uh, like a million things on this car because uh, I want to be confident in my diagnostic. And uh, I know that I probably already spent way too much time on this, but that's okay. Uh, every uh, diagnosis is different, and so you always l learn something from it. So I already, I, I, I took apart the, the BCM, I took everything out so I can inspect the. Uh, I can ex inspect the the circuit board, and I wasn't really able to find anything, and I have it taken apart. Uh, in order to take it out, I took the the seven connectors out, and there are, are two nuts that's holding the the BCM in place. So I, j I took the circuit board out just to inspect it to see if I found anything obvious and I couldn't really find anything. And so and so uh, I do see some like oily residue on the circuit board, but I don't really see anything. And so anyhow, uh, I'm connected to the connector A. Uh, with a brown and gray wire. And so that's pin six for connector A. I'm just having a look at the wiring to make sure that the wiring is okay for the, the front wiper uh, sense circuit. So it's reading 0 0.4 ohms and, and that's perfect. Uh, I have uh, the wire connected to pin six. They call it the, the W7 uh, f f front wiper sense circuit. So I'm connected f from inside the vehicle here all the way to uh, all the way to where the wiper motor is on pin three down here. It's the same wire. It's a uh, it's a brown and gray wire. So it's it's pin three on the connector. And so, so that wire is good. Um, I really don't like the flow charts that's, that's in the, the service data because the flow charts don't really make too much sense on, on, uh, in some uh, circumstances. So I was just having a look here. It said to check the W7 front wiper park switch sense circuit for a short to ground. It said to turn the ignition off, disconnect the BCM A harness connector. It said to measure the resistance between ground and the W7 front wiper park sense circuit. It said if it's above 10K ohms. So I, I don't know if, if that means to, to measure at the connector over here or, or at the... Uh, inside the vehicle because when i do it from inside the vehicle it says that it's open when i connect it to ground so it doesn't make any sense to me so what i'm, I'm gonna do is just to, to take the the multimeter off off of this and to the, to just do and what they're telling me to do here but the, i don't think it makes too much sense for me i know that the wire is good and that's usually all I need to know. Uh, I'm pretty certain now that the BCM is bad. So if I connect it from here to, to a ground that's inside the dash, it's, it's saying open. It's not really doing anything. So that would be above 10K ohms as open circuit. So there isn't anything going on here.
So I'm just going to, to disconnect this for a moment. Go back from uh, under the hood. So uh, <clears throat> even if I connect it from, from inside the passenger's uh, dash, and even if I connect it from here, and then I... I choose a ground that's saying open. It's not really doing anything. So to me, it's not really making any sense from what they are telling me to do. So, but anyhow, I know that the wire is good for the for this circuit. So I'm pretty sure now that the BCM is bad. So I probably have to go to the Chrysler dealership to order a new BCM for this. So one other thing I wanted to mention is that uh, I printed out a wiring diagram for the uh, the low beam headlights. And I think I'm going to stop with my diagnostic here because, uh, because the front wipers are not working. So the issue here is that that one connector is tied to a, a lot of circuits that's related to what I'm having. So the one connector here, and they call it the uh, the A, A harness connector. So that connector here is tied to a bunch of circuits to which I'm having a problem with. The, uh, the left low beam, the wiper park switch sense, and I don't know if it's the wiper relay control as well. But uh, all of these cir circuits are not working and that's connected to the body control module. So I'm, I'm pretty certain now that the body control module is bad on this. So I know I've been a little hesitant in the diagnostic because I really wanted to make sure that this was the problem. I don't want to go and start guessing and throwing parts at it. So I know my diagnostic was kind of uh, all over the place, but this one was a little bit of a, of a tricky one for me. So I'm just going to head over now to the Chrysler dealership and see on what happens. See if I can get a BCM and I'll have to get it uh, programmed somehow. Uh, I don't know if I have to drive the car over and have them program it or something with while I have the old BCM connected because uh, this car cannot operate without the BCM, the old BCM connected to it. So I'm just, I'm parked outside the Chrysler dealership, Mississauga dealership on, on Battleford. Uh, this dealership has been newly uh, renovated. Uh, it's a little bit uh, the way the, uh, <laughs> the layout of this dealership is a bit awkward. So anyhow, the the dealership wants six hundred and twelve dollars for a new BCM, and they want one hundred and sixty five dollars to do the programming. Then plus taxes, it's thirteen percent taxes here in uh, uh, Ontario. So it's a little bit. It's pretty expensive. Not as expensive compared to other cars, but it's, st it's still a lot of money here that we are talking about. And so uh, I already spoke to the uh, the parts department and the service advisor, and I asked I asked the service advisor if I could just if I could drive the car here with the old BCM, install the new BCM, and then the guys can push the vehicle in and program it then because that's the only way. I can get this done because I don't have any anybody else who can can program these vehicles for me. So one thing I forgot to mention earlier is that I already had a look at the uh, at the wires inside the wire loom on both sides, the passenger and on the driver's side as well. So I already I checked to see if there's any broken wires or anything because typically the doors they open and close, and so. It's very common for wires to be broken here, but that's not the issue on, on this. So the, the customer 
gave me the approval to order the new BCM computer. So I ordered it. It's about four to five days out. So I have to wait four to five days. And when it comes in, they'll give me a call. And then I'll, I'll drive this vehicle to the dealer. I'll take the old BCM out. I'll put the new BCM in. And then the, the technicians or the mechanics, they will basically just push this vehicle into the shop. And they'll program it. The computer is about $612 plus tax and the programming $165 for the programming. And then it, sh it should fix the problem after that. And uh, I think that that's about it at this point. Uh, I'll give you guys an update uh, w w once the uh, computer is in.